Okay, so we're going to go through oral arguments on Tuesday. What happens mm-hmm. after that? How long does this stretch out, or could it stretch out? Well, what happens, it, it's very frustrating to people because uh, the, the justices get up at the end of oral argument. They literally walk behind a curtain. They disappear, and then they have a conference later that week. Um, probably they will meet on Wednesday afternoon mm-hmm. uh, of next week, and they discuss it, and they vote. Um, All nine and, together. Yes, that's right. One by one, they cast their votes. Uh, and then they see who who wins and who loses. That's all the vote means. So five people for uh, for the cake shop, four people for the Civil Rights Commission, the other way around. Now we know the result, and then uh, the opinion is assigned, and either the chief justice, if his side wins, he, he assigns the opinion to a justice. He says, turns to Justice Alito and says, you will write the opinion. Um, if the chief justice is in the minority, if his side loses – then the senior justice in the majority will assign the opinion. Now, if that happens in this case, it is virtually certain that the senior justice in the majority would be Justice Kennedy, and the odds are very good that he'll assign the uh, opinion to himself. I think that if the uh, cake shop wins, then the odds are good that the uh, opinion will be assigned to Justice Alito. We won't know, however, at the end of the week, because what happens then is that the winning side begins to prepare its opinion. And these opinions can be literally 100 pages long, um, reviewing the precedents, reviewing the facts, and so forth. Meanwhile, the losing side is preparing at least one dissent, uh, what's called the principal dissent. And then sometimes people write separate, shorter dissents as well. Drafts of these are prepared, and then they're all sent around. All nine justices get to read both. And they make comments. They say, you, you know, on page 26, you say this, but that's not true. On page 27, I don't think, you know, I think your discussion of, of the Hobby Lobby case is wrong. These go back and forth. And the, the author of the opinion needs to pay attention because if the other side is too persuasive in its dissent or in its uh, criticism of his opinion, uh, votes may switch. And that's called losing the court. And so you you uh, you have to be very skillful in holding on to the core of what you want to say, but at the same time accommodating concerns from other justices. And and Jim, you know, uh, you you follow the Supreme Court, and I'm sure you read the opinions. And half the time, you'll get to the end of it and say, you know, what the hell did that mean? They they, <laughs> they almost told me what they were talking about, but they didn't quite. And the yeah. reason is not accidental. It is very often that the only way they can keep five justices together on one opinion is to fudge it, to sort of say, well, we're doing this for a bunch of reasons, and we're not going to tell you all of them, but here's a few, and you can figure it out, and we got to go now. Uh, because you have to write it vaguely to get those five votes. Um, so that opinion, that goes back, that goes through several stages of being sent back and forth. And usually, on a big case like this, the uh, clerks and the and the justices will be working on it late into the night in the last weeks of the term. I, I would not be surprised if this case came down uh, on the last uh, day of the term in at the end of June. That's how long it's going to take to find out what went on, and there will be no leaks.